So, it came to me three quarters into my 64th year that I should set down in written order 12 things that have happened to me of a spiritual or transcendental nature. There are really no words to describe such experiences, however, they are beyond words, ineffable. This is what the Jewish theologian Abraham Heschel has to say about it. Now, to become aware of the ineffable is to part company with words. The tangent to the curve of human experience lies beyond the limits of language. The world of things we perceive is but a veil. Its flutter is music, its ornament science, but what it conceals is inscrutable. Its silence remains unbroken. No words can carry it away. Sometimes we wish the world could cry and tell us about that which made it pregnant with fear, filling it with grandeur. Sometimes we wish our own heart would speak of that which made it heavy with wonder. So in spite of there being no words, I wish and I hope that my heart has here found the words to speak of what has happened to me. The first of the twelve is Air Force Bump. This is the first transcendental experience I remember. I was just out of Air Force boot camp in an interim one-month assignment in Lackland, Texas before starting weather observer training in Rantoul, Illinois. I spent some of my days repairing screen doors and windows. I learned to use a screen rolling tool, sort of a miniature pizza cutting wheel, to press a plastic cord or a spline down on top of the screen to a groove, on the edge of the screen to a window or door. I got good at it, and once in a while, and now even, I still have occasion to repair a screen window or door. I have a screen roller, some spline, and a roll of screen tucked away somewhere. I also learned, though, how to wash out cooking pots larger than myself in the mess hall in between meals. I was taught how to crawl into a pot while it was on its side, scrub it out, and then rinse it. I found out that mess hall cooking for a large number of men and women is a 24-hour endeavor. I only had to put in an eight-hour shift for which I was grateful. I've not had opportunity since then to wash out large mess hall pots, and I'm also thankful for that. I don't have any human-sized pots tucked away somewhere. Else. <laughs> I was deeply depressed, though, for reasons unclear to me at that time. I would go to two or three movies at a time on my days off. Beer was cheap at the NCO club, and I drank to excess. I took naps often. I had been learning to fly small planes before joining the Air Force, and I had my student license. It seemed to cost too much to continue lessons, though it took too much energy, and it seemed pointless. I just left it off. Then one afternoon, while I was lying on my bunk, in the afternoon, dozing, feeling kind of sick, and still not knowing why, I had the first ineffable experience I remember. Out of nowhere, as I lay there, I found myself in the center of light. Light was everywhere golden white light. The light wasn't apparent outside of me, I knew. If someone had been there, they wouldn't have seen it. This was an inner experience. I'm not sure how long the encounter continued. It was timeless. After a while, the light faded, and there it was in my bunk, just as before. That was it. Didn't change my life. I didn't feel better. My depression didn't lift. But I had the experience with me. It happened, and it made a difference. I've never forgotten. Before long, I was granted a two-week leave to go home to Salina, Kansas, before reporting to Weather Observer School. And such was the first of my 12 transcendental experiences. The next is Don Stops By. <laughs> 